my girlfriend and I have been together for about a year now. We were both 19 at the time, and I was home alone this night. If I remember correctly, it was a Wednesday when she texted me asking me to do her a favor. Now, she had a younger brother, Dustin, who was 10, and at the time her parents were out of town. She asked me if I could bring Dustin to his baseball game and drive him back afterwards as she was swarmed with homework and she said she couldn't find time to do it herself. I of course agreed, as I didn't have anything planned that night, and Dustin and I actually got along pretty well. The game started at 7, so I showed up at 6.30 to take Dustin to the field. The whole layout of the place was really weird. You had to park in this parking lot and walk about 5 minutes on this path just to get to the field. We live in a pretty forested area, so the whole place was surrounded in trees. Once we finally got to the field, Dustin went off to go to his team, and I proceeded to walk over to the bleachers. The game lasted a pretty long time, it went into a few extra innings. By the time it was finished, it was pitch black outside. Dustin had to talk to his coach about something, so we were the last ones to head to the parking lot. Now that the light to the field was turned off, pretty much all you could see were trees. If I'm being honest, it was a pretty creepy setting, but we started to head back. As we were walking back, a notification popped up on my phone. It was my girlfriend asking where we were. I responded, saying the game lasted a while, but we were now heading back to the parking lot. As we kept walking down the path, Dustin stopped me. He pointed in front of us and said, Dude, do you see that? I stopped. It was insanely dark, but I squinted. I saw the outline of a figure standing in the distance. As my eyes focused, I noticed the dude walk off the path into the trees. Though, I pretended not to see it, as I didn't want to freak Dustin out. I just told him I didn't see anything. So, we kept walking. As we passed the part where the figure was, I could swear I heard rustling in the trees next to us. I didn't say anything, and we just kept walking. About a minute later, we made it to the car. I reached in my pocket to grab my keys. But I felt nothing. My heart dropped, realizing that they had probably fallen out of my pocket when I sat down on the bleachers. I thought about going back for them, when Dustin once again pointed out that he saw some figure on the path. At that point, I realized going back for them wasn't an option. Whoever that figure was really disturbed me. I mean, it was insanely late on a Wednesday night. Who would just sit in the middle of the forest? We both agreed it was best to just walk home, as it was only like a 15 minute walk. I just worry about finding my car keys in the morning. So we started walking. It was on a straight stretch of neighborhood roads with a decent amount of street lights. I looked back, and that's when I saw the figure again. This time, since there was more light, I could tell it was a dude, maybe mid-30s. He was just standing there underneath one of the street lights, looking up at it. He was playing with something in his hands. I looked closer and realized it was a knife. We were both extremely disturbed at that point. Though we kept walking, checking behind us constantly. I noticed the guy seemed to be moving to a new streetlight whenever I turned around. Initially, I thought it was my eyes playing tricks on me. But I started counting them, and realized five streetlights behind us had quickly turned to three. I could hear the guy started faintly making groaning sounds. I was absolutely terrified. We picked up the pace a bit, and turned a corner. We were now on the last stretch of street before we got to my girlfriend's house. That's when we heard heavy footsteps charging down the path behind us. The guy was literally now running towards us. We immediately broke into a sprint, and once we got to my girlfriend's house, we crouched down behind a bush in the front yard. I spammed her phone with messages to open the front door. About a minute later, I heard the door start to open, and me and Dustin booked it inside. I immediately went to the window, facing the street, and we saw the guy. The guy was now in the middle of the street, just circling around. He was still groaning. I could tell he still had that knife in his hand. He started kicking people's trash bins over. We called the police immediately, but of course, he was gone by the time they arrived. And as far as I know, they never found him. I had to have my girlfriend bring me home, and on the way, I told her everything. Later that week, her parents would thank me for keeping their son safe, and didn't hold any ill will against me for the situation. I also went back to the field a few days later, this time with a few of my friends. And sure enough, there my keys were, lying on the ground next to the bleachers. Overall, the whole situation was insanely terrifying. Whoever was following us that night clearly wasn't in their right mind.
This was back when I played basketball in middle school. I was in 8th grade, and we had a lot of games that season, so it wasn't uncommon to have 3 or 4 games fit into a single week. It was a Monday, and we had a home game against one of our rival schools at 8 that night. Now, we almost never played games that late, but at the time our second gym was under construction, so all the younger teams had to play before us on the main gym, which caused our game to get pushed back pretty late. I remember the score was close pretty much the whole game, though we lost after giving up a decent lead in the last few minutes. We all headed to the locker room to get our stuff, which was in the basement of the building. As I opened my locker, my coach called me to his office, so I followed him to another part of the basement. He wanted to talk to me about my plans for pursuing basketball in high school, and just some general stuff like that. We talked for around 10 minutes, and when we were done, I realized everyone else had left. We were the only ones in the basement at that point. If I'm being honest, it was a pretty creepy setting. I mean, I do have classes in the basement, but that was always during the day, and never alone. My coach left, but I still had to get some stuff from my locker and change my shoes. I walked into the locker room, got my stuff, and proceeded to sit down to take off my shoes. As I was untying them though, I swear I could hear someone walking down the stairs to the basement. At first, I just figured it was my coach thinking he must have forgotten something. But no, I saw a man in a janitor uniform now walking around the basement. I thought it was weird, as I didn't think school janitors worked this late. But I just reasoned it was possible that they did, as I hadn't even ever been in the school this late, so how could I have known? I quickly forgot about it and continued changing my shoes. That's when the man walked in the locker room with a mop in his hand. We made eye contact, but I quickly looked back down at my shoes. I could tell the dude was just staring at me. I was insanely weirded out at that point. I mean, the guy wasn't even using the mop. He was just holding it and staring at me. This went on for a good 20 seconds when I heard the guy walk over to the back exit in the locker room. Now, the school basement had a couple emergency exits, one of them being in the locker room. The guy opened the door, and that's when I knew I was in some sort of danger. Three other dudes wearing almost all black entered the room. Now, at this point, not a single word had been exchanged. The four guys were now just looking at me. I could feel my heart pounding. Without having much time to think, I got up and ran as fast as I could up the stairs and to the school front door exit. No, I swear, the whole time I could hear footsteps chasing me. When I got to the front door, I looked behind me, but there was no one there. I walked outside, and I saw an illegally parked white van right next to the school, though the parking lot itself was empty. I ran home that night, and the next day at school I told my principal about the whole incident, but he honestly didn't seem like he cared at all, so nothing ever came of this situation. To this day, I still don't know what the intentions of those guys were, or how the first guy even got in the building, but I could tell, just by the stare alone that those guys gave me, they didn't have good intentions. I live in a small town. It was a Friday night, and every Friday, me and my younger brother would go to a nearby elementary school soccer field to play soccer with some of our friends. My brother was 10, and I was 12. Our parents weren't that strict, and for whatever reason, the school would leave their field lights on at night, so we would always play at night. I remember it was around 8 at night when me and my younger brother made the half mile walk to the field. The route we took was pretty remote. Anyway, we showed up, met our friends, and messed around for about an hour. That's when I noticed a car show up and pull up into the school parking lot. I thought it was weird, but didn't mention it to anyone. We continued with our game, though the whole time I would constantly glance back at the car. It was just sitting there with its headlights on. That's when I noticed a man get out and walk up to some bleachers near the field. He sat down and was now just watching all of us. My friends, who were now aware of the guy, pointed him out, saying how weird it was. We tried to keep playing, but honestly we couldn't knowing some stranger was watching us. We all agreed to cut the game short and just walk home as most of us felt pretty uncomfortable. And so we did, me and my brother headed off back towards home. We were walking for a while, and I quickly glanced behind us. I noticed the guy stood up, though no, we just continued our walk. Up ahead of us was an unlit dirt road that continued for a good part of the trip. 
I looked behind us again, and that's when I saw the dude now walking in our direction. I panicked, but quickly figured he could have been just walking back to his car, as it was in the same direction. But that hope was quickly shot down, as I noticed the guy walk right past his car. At that point, I was almost certain he was following us. I noticed my brother knew something was wrong looking at my expression. Now, the dirt road we were on went through a forest, and had a curve at the start of it. Once we got to the curve, I looked back and noticed that for this little section of the path, we were out of the guy's sight. Thinking fast, I pulled my brother into the woods and we ducked down behind some bushes. A few seconds passed until we could see the man's shadow coming down the road. He walked past us, but then realizing we were no longer in front of him, he turned back around. I was now 100% certain this guy was following us. My heart was racing, but I tried to keep as quiet as possible. After a few minutes of searching, the man did find us, and finally gave up, continuing forward on the path. We stayed in the forest for a while before getting the courage to come out. We walked the rest of the way home with no problems. Though, the next time I saw my friends at school, I told them what happened. And to my horror, almost every one of them said they had a similar experience on their way home. We all agreed it was best just to keep it between us and not tell our parents. Thinking back to that situation still gives me chills to this day. I don't like to think what that guy's intentions were that night.